What's up guys, Sila here and I am back with another mount guide, this time showing you how to get the Frost Plains Battle Ball mount. Now this is a reward from completing the Glory of the Draenor Hero Achievement series. When you complete all of the criteria for this achievement, you'll be rewarded with the amount. And all of these achievements are from Draenor Dungeons, so the solo bullet as a 110, um, even as a damage dealer and probably as a tank and healer as well. Um, but you will need specific things, for example, one of the dungeons requires you to be able to resurrect. One of them requires you to be able to knock things back. So having a few alts at 110 will be really crucial for actually getting this done solo. But if you have those things, then you can easily get this done solo. So the first one we're going to cover is going to be the Blood Mall Slag Mines, which is located in Frostfire Ridge, in kind of the, the north section. And we'll want to be on heroic difficulty. You don't want to be on normal or mythic as you won't get criteria for the achievement even if you do it. We will also be getting the credit towards the Drain or Dungeon Hero as well if you don't have that. So from this dungeon we're going to get a gift of earth and fire. Come with me if you want to live and also is Drain on fire. Um, so we're just going to kill, uh, kill through the trash, nothing too difficult. And most of these are really easy. Like Hunter isn't a class that has great sustained healing. It has kind of like a burst heal cooldown. Which is nice in some instances, but if you have like sustain healing, then these achievements will be pretty much a joke for you. Um, and I think my hunter is around 8 to 80 at this point, so it's, you know, you don't really need that high gear to get this done. 880 is really easily achieved. So once the first boss is dead, you do need to head down the right hand side path as you just seen, kill the first boss, and then head to the back of the room and click on Chroman. Once Chroman has been clicked on, you need to keep him alive. And um, if you're a class that can do off heals, then keep him topped up as you can heal him. But outside of that, just make sure he's nice and healthy. You want to keep him alive as if he dies, he failed, and you're going to have to come in tomorrow or whatever and, and try again or come in on an ult. Um, so I just pull off all these mobs uh, kind of coming up. I don't want Chroman to take un uh, any unnecessary damage. So I'm just killing them off before they can get to him as it's just going to keep him alive as he's probably going to pull them easier than I'll pull them. So I just make sure they're dead before he even gets in range. Come down here, kill all these mobs, kill them as quickly as possible to do some AoE damage so it's a little bit annoying. And then we're on to the first achievement, which is a Gift of Earth and Fire, which means we have to kill the uh, Magma Lotus while Cal uh, Calamity and Ruination are alive. So you want to keep this Ogre guy alive for a bit until he summons the Ruination and Calamity. Once he summons both of them, then you can kill him and then kill the, the Magma guy who spawns later. Now a couple of things to be wary of is Chroman will try and take part in the fight, so he'll take some damage, you can even pull aggro. And also if you do fail, if you do mess up, you can just run out of that room and reset, and then run back in and try again. But it shouldn't be that difficult. With that dead, wait a few seconds, Chroman will pick up his sword, and then we can move on to the next section. Now my Chroman does take quite a bit of damage, he is tanking one of the mobs, so he is on like 30% HP. So we're on to the next boss now, and you can basically pull it from quite far away. Make sure you dodge in the boulders, and that'll help keep Chroman nice and healthy as well. But nothing too special, there's no achievements from that boss, so you can just kill it as quickly as possible, that's fine. Head down here, killing off the Ogron, and then the next achievement we're going to get is Is Draenor on Fire, which is to kill Gugrok without killing any unstable slags. So I do wait for one of them to spawn. I don't know if you need one to spawn before you can kill him. You probably can, but I want it to just be safe. Um, so I just wait for one of them to spawn before I do anything. So I just, just kind of pull it, dodge any mechanics, although it's not going to do very much damage. And then eventually it'll summon an unstable slag, and then we can finally kill off the boss. Not a problem. And with that, we're going to get the come with me if you want to live. It's Draenor on fire and a gift of earth and fire. Um, I think you need to speak to Chroman once you've done all that just to get the achievement, but either way, it's not that much different. So the next achievement on our list is going to be the Iron Docks, which is north of, um, of Gorgrond. And from this, we're going to get Militaristic Expansionist, which is the first achievement. And that's basically to pull the Olagar, the Garnock, and Druna, which are the three mobs that you just see me run through. Pull them to the boss and then don't kill them. You need to kill the boss while they're in combat. So don't use any AoE spells or anything like that. Just like aggro them on your mount, run to the boss, kill the boss using single target, and then you've got the achievement. Next up, we're going to pull all of these four Ogron while mounted. And then we're going to pull them all the way back to the kind of Death Star wheel things. And this is for expert timing, which is to kill four of them in one wheel. So we're going to pull them back to the wheel, fire the wheel, and it's going to bug out. They're going to reset. 
But if you do it right, you're going to get the achievement anyway. It just makes things a little bit easier. But if you don't want to take the risk on kind of the cheese method, then all you need to do is sit in the wheel, wait for them all to be in like a straight line. They'll have an, it'll take a while, but they'll eventually path in a, a line. Like they'll all be on line with each other. Fire the wheel and you'll kill all four. And nothing special from this boss, so we can just kill it off as normal. And then we're going to head and kill the trash onto the next boss. So you can just avoid this, kill it, it doesn't really make any difference, we don't need to do anything in particular with it. And once again this is a boss that doesn't do anything for us, no achievement or anything along those lines. The next achievement we're going to get is from the next boss though, and that is to defeat Skullock without taking damage from Cannon Barrage or Backdraft. Uh, I would recommend skill, uh, killing off Skullock first, and then he's going to do like a knock you, if, you, if you're too slow you'll get knocked back. And he'll start casting backdraft, and when that happens, hide behind the kind of structures, and you won't take damage for it. And to avoid cannon barrage, just don't stand in the, the fire, basically. Easy as that, or the, like the cannon fire. Um, but you should kill them fast enough that those mechanics shouldn't be an issue. But if you don't, you know, there you go, that's how you, you handle those. So the next dungeon on our list is going to be the Grim Rail Depot. And for that, we are going to need some kind of knockback, so Typhoon, or the... Um, Hunter Explosion, I can't remember the name of it, but the I think it's like Blasting Shot or something. Basically any spell that can knock someone back, so if it's a Talon or whatever you can do to do that, then make sure you are doing that. And this dungeon is also in Gorgrond as well, it's just kind of like to the right of Iron Docks. The first achievement up is going to be the This Is Why We Can Have Nice Things, and you're going to notice all these boxes around the room. And um, you want to make sure the boss charges into them. So you're just going to sit him here, and then he'll eventually do mad dash, and he'll mad dash into the box. And then we're going to run to the next box. The boxes are always in the same spot, so just follow the path that I take. And then once he's destroyed all of them, we can just kill the boss, not a problem. With all of those done, we can head up here, and we can head towards the next boss. And the next boss is going to be the one that we need the knockback for, so if you need to retalent or bring in an ult or whatever, then now is the time to do it. So the next achievement is going to be um, No Ticket, and that's to defeat Nitrog after abruptly removing 20 enemies. So you're going to do some damage to him, you're going to make him jump in the cannon, and then all of these enemies here need to be knocked off, so we need to knock off 20 of them. Now there's no real way of tracking how many you've knocked off, you'll just kind of have to do a mental count. Um, I knock off way more than I need just to be sure. But I have to wait for my cooldown. I am running up and down as well to avoid the cannon barrage because it does hurt. Um, you can hide behind the pillar if you want to and wait for the mobs to pile up. Or you can keep running up and down, uh, which is the way that I do it. It's up to you. But either way, you just want to wait for your knockback to come off cooldown and then knock them off the side. Make sure you don't fall off yourself. Just kind of be very careful and get them as close to the edge as possible. So this is one of the more difficult achievements because one, you need a specific spell, and two, the fight does a decent amount of damage considering the level. So do keep those things in mind, but like Typhoon or something along those lines will do the job perfectly. And once we've knocked off enough, then you can just DPS it down the cannon, you don't have to jump in the cannon and fire at his cannon, you can literally just do DPS yourself and you'll be fine. But I knock off way more than I need just to be, to be sure that I get the achievement. So as you see, I'm just damaging the cannon, he'll pop out of it, and then we can kill him, and we'll get no ticket. Easy as that. And with that out of the way, there are no more um, meta achievements in here, apart from completing the dungeon. So we're going to head up here, kill off all the trash, and then eventually the last boss will fly down, and we'll be able to finish the dungeon. It does take quite a bit of time, and I actually thought it bugged out. But there we go, she's down, and we can kill her, and we finish the dungeon. So we're going to head out and we're going to do the third and final dungeon that's in Gorgrond, which is the Everbloom. And from here we're going to get two achievements, which is Water Management and also Weed Whacker. And if you don't know where Everbloom is, it's to the kind of northeast of the zone. We're going to head inside on Heroic, and you can skip most of the trash as long as you can get by it. There's no particular reason to kill it. The only trash we need to kill right now is the trash coming up to the first boss. These kind of like three packs of three, um, as once they're killed, the boss will activate. So they do a stun as well, which you can interrupt, but that's not too important. So from this boss, we're going to get water management, which basically is to not let any of the water globes hit him. 
He has kind of like a decaying energy bar and when it hits zero he'll summon the globes, they'll slowly move towards him and you have to kill them before he, uh, they reach him. But we do so much damage that he doesn't even get close to that point and if you are getting close to that point for whatever reason then just kill the boss off before the water hits him or if they are close just kill them and then focus back on the boss. So we're on to the second boss now, there's no achievements or anything special from this. We're just going to kill it down and uh, it doesn't matter what order you kill them in, just kill them basically. They don't share HP or whatever, I just kill the big guy first. And then we're on to the third boss. There is an achievement from this boss, but we don't need it for the mount. So we're going to ignore it, which is good, it's a little bit of a pain. With that boss dead, we're going to head upwards towards these roots. And then a guy will come along and break them for us. And then the final achievement is Weed Whacker, which is to not let any of the Kirintor battle mages die. And you do that by not facing any mechanics towards them, freeing them when they get rooted, don't let any ads hit them. Basically just look after them, make sure they don't die. Simple as that. And then kill the boss and you'll have done that achievement. So next up is Shadow Moon Burial Ground, which is kind of to more, towards more the uh, west-ish of the zone. Head inside and from here we're going to get What Is Your Sign, Icky Ickers, and Souls of the Lost. And we're going to head down. Now this is one of the more tricky ones and I'm going to start explaining the first boss before we get to it. So she's going to do like lunar phases, there'll be like moons that light up that you need to stand in and then she'll light up one of the three different runes that's around the room. Um, it's a, a kind of repeating pattern, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And if she lights up say one, then you need to run through two and three and make sure all of two and three have been ran through. So you'll see what I mean in a moment. So we're going to get a low, um, but don't kill her. And we're going to kill the ad that spawns and then she'll do the lunar cycle. We're going to stand in the moon when that happens, any second now, there we go. And then you're going to see she lit up one of the runes. So we're going to run through every other rune that wasn't the one that she lit up. And then once we've ran through them all, we can kill her and we've done the achievement. Simple as that. So if she lights up rune 2, then you'll run through rune 1 and 3. If she lights up rune 3, you'll run through 1 and 2. Easy as that. And you need to make sure it's only rune 3 that's all around the room that is um, still a little purple. So onto the third boss, nothing special there, and then we're onto the fourth boss achievement, and you need to pull these little spiders and don't kill them. Just let them chase you, and don't kill any of them. I mean, you can pull the big spiders as well, but we don't need those for the achievement. And we're going to run them all the way to the boss, and this will hurt quite a bit. I actually take quite a lot of damage, but eventually the boss will start sucking in all of the spiders, and then once it's done that, then you've done the achievement. Now, I end up moving off of the, the root just to make sure they do get eaten, but once you've made sure all the little spiders have been eaten by the boss, you can kill the boss and you've done the achievement. So now moving up to the final achievement, which is going to be Souls of the Lost, and that is to kill two of the skeletons on the skeleton wall within five seconds of each other. So don't kill him too quickly, just DPS him down a little, wait for the wall to spawn, and then just kill off two of the skeletons. Once they've been killed, finish the boss. Next up on our list is going to be the Spires of Wreck, and from here we're going to get the Ready for Raiding, we're also going to get the Magnific uh, Magnify Enhance, oh sorry this isn't even Spires of Wreck, this is Skyreach, and we're also going to get Isaw Solace and Monomania. So some of them are a little bit more tricky I guess in here, and the first boss is to basically not get hit by any mechanics, and if you don't know where Skyreach is, it is in the... Spires of Arak zone. So the first boss is basically to not get hit by any mechanic. There's going to be like wind walls and things like that, but you can kill it so fast that it won't even do mechanics. But if it does, just don't get hit by any. The second boss isn't going to do anything special. So I'm not really going to talk about it too much, but the third boss, I had a lot of issues with this as a ranged. Um, it wasn't stopping one of its mechanics, even though it was in melee range. So I had to switch to survival. It was the only way I could do the achievement. So for this, you might have to speak, uh, switch to a melee spec or bring in another character that has a melee spec. And the goal of this achievement is to basically get three birds chasing you, three of the like little phoenixes that it'll spawn right there. They'll chase you down and you want to kite it. And then if you move away from the boss, it's going to do this screech. And I couldn't get him to stop the screech when I walked into melee range. I'm not too sure if that's a bug or what. But I had to switch to survival to actually get him to stop doing the screech. So we're going to get three of them, and then when you've got three of them on you, you're going to let them all kind of explode in one pile away from all of the other ashes. 
And then once that happens, you're going to let another bird fly over and explode into those three piles. So just to make sure I'd done it, I, I did it a couple more times, just to, to ensure the achievement was done. But once you've made all three of them explode into, a, or one explode into three piles, then you've done the achievement. But you could do it a couple more times like I do, just to 100% ensure you've done it. And then once you have done that, you can kill the boss. Easy as that. So the final boss does have two achievements, and we can get both of them in one run, um, but you will need to do them in a specific order to get that done. So the first one we'll need to do is the... Monomania? Actually, no, sorry, it's the Magnify Enhance. Um, we need to do that one first. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to run to the right-hand side, and there's going to be a little platform that you can see below. You're going to pull the boss, and then you're going to jump onto that platform. Now there's going to be a bird that will try and carry you off, so kill that as soon as possible. And then the boss will spawn the laser, and you want the laser to hit like the golem, kill the golem, and then jump down. And then that's one of the achievements done. Um, and then the boss will reset, we can run all the way back around. And then the second achievement is to not let the... Or not kill any of the shielding constructs. So basically it's just kill the boss before they spawn. Or don't kill them when they're alive, simple as that. But we kill him before he spawns any, and pretty much any 110 should be able to do that as well. So next up is going to be Orkundun, which is in Talador. And from here we're going to get two achievements, I believe it is. It is the They Are Fallen Down. Oh, they all fall down. Actually, that's the only achievement we get from this place. So you could come in, do the achievement if you've already completed Orkundun on Heroic. You could just do that one achievement and then leave. So we're going to run through here and we're going to wait for the, the whole RP thing to happen. And um, there's no way to speed it up as far as I know, unfortunately. But eventually the door will unlock and then we can move on to the first boss. Now nothing too special you need to know or do for the first boss. Um, but I would recommend tracking... I, I don't, actually, I don't know if it does track properly. But you could track the achievement for this as well. I'm not too sure if it actually worked. But the achievement is to kill 12 fallen uh, Orkanai protectors within 3 seconds. So it is quite a waiting game, and you're actually going to take quite a lot of damage if you don't have good sustained healing. Um, as a hunter, I just tried to kite them as much as possible, and you'll you'll see what I mean in a short while. But you know, it was a little bit difficult without like good consistent healing. So we're going to kill the first boss off, nothing too special there. And then we're going to clear the trash on the way to the second boss. And then once we get there, what you're going to do is you're pretty much going to do no damage to the boss. You know, don't really do very much. Just keep it around and let her do her thing. So eventually, you can interrupt the cast. That's fine. It'll reduce the damage you take. So I would recommend it. And eventually, she's going to do um, an ability where she resurrects the corpse on the ground. So the soul vessel, I would recommend getting inside the circle. It does some damage. You know, once again, it's reducing the damage that you're taking. But you don't have to be in it. Um, if you want to kite the mobs around or whatever, there's quite a lot of them. And it's probably worth taking the soul vessel damage. So she went over and resurrected the pack, but she only resurrected two of the four. It's kind of a little bit RNG of how many she'll resurrect. And you need to let her resurrect all 12, basically. So just keep an eye on how many she's done. Um, make sure you know you've not got too little, as she'll fail the achievement. And you just need to keep... Basically, try and kite them around if you've got any talents that can keep them away from you. Then do that, and just wait until she's re uh, resurrected all of them. It will take quite a lot of time, as I said, that's why I would recommend having some kind of sustained healing. If you've got a talent that will give you healers over time, or if you've got an ult that can do pretty good heals, like a, I don't know, a druid or something that can heal themselves, then that's probably a lot better than anything else, as it's just a waiting game. And the more ads that you're going to get, the more damage you're going to start to take. They can be slowed, and I think they can be stunned as well, so you can just kind of like run around and kite them around or whatever, but it, it will take some time. So eventually, I think I've got like six up right now, eventually she will resurrect quite a big pack, there we go, and I think at this point I have about 10, maybe 12, but I wait a little bit longer just to ensure that I do have them all. Because um, I don't want to kill a, a little, oh, I don't want to kill them too early and find out that I've you know, missed one or missed two. So I do wait for her to summon a little bit more, and then when she has eventually done that, you just basically need to kill them all 
as soon as possible. You know, save any big AOE cooldowns or whatever, and just kill them all down. So I think I have enough at this point, but I think I'm just waiting for one more pack just to be 100% sure. I'd rather spend a little bit more time than um, fail in it. So yeah, they can be stunned, I just threw down a binding shot. So they're completely CCable as well, and she's going to summon these final ones, and I think this is where I decide to kill them. So I use my um, multi shot, they all die pretty damn quick. So with them all dead, we can finally finish off the boss. Remember, they have to be killed within 3 seconds, so you do want some kind of big AoE burst or something along those lines just to get them all killed as soon as possible. And then we can move on to the next boss. Now there's no more achievements in here, so I'm just running through it for the sake of the dungeon, of the Draenor dungeon hero, as you will need to get that done if you haven't done this dungeon before. But if you have done it, then at this point you could just leave the dungeon and start heading to the next one, which I believe is Upper Black Rock Spire. So if you're watching this video and doing it kind of with me, then start making your way to Upper Black Rock Spire and you'll be there nice and quick. And um, for those that uh, are still in here, then just finish up the, the trash, the boss will spawn, kill the boss, there's nothing too crazy going on there. Jump down, take the teleporter, kill the, the trash pack again, take the next teleporter, kill the trash pack again. Focus on the, the like, the warlocks, not their minions, because then once you kill the warlock, their minion will despawn. And then we head to the final guy. Once we're done with that, it will take us down to the final platform. And then we can kill this guy. Terran Gore. Get him killed. And once he is dead, um, we're done. We're done in here. We got our Draenor dungeon achievement, or at least part of it. And then we can start heading to the next dungeon. So for the next one, you will need a class that can resurrect. So take, you know, a priest, paladin, monk, whatever has a resurrect spell, you will need one. And if you don't know where Upper Black Rock is, it's found in um, Burning Steps, and you want to head inside Black Rock Mountain. And we're going to head inside this part here, up and to the left. And that will take us inside. So there are quite a few difficult achievements in here, and this is probably one of the more tough ones to do. The first one up is going to be the... Magnets, how do they work? And that's to kill Orbender without letting him cast four times. So first of all, we're going to kill off all of these kind of rooms of mobs because they're going to unlock the door so we can get to the boss. And the boss is going to have these kind of like magnet traps all the way around, uh, all around his room. And the more that are active, the less damage he takes. So the way I'd recommend to do this is to DPS him down a little, let him do the first two, it's, which is at like 66%. Activate them both and then just burst the boss. Save all your cooldowns for when you've activated those two traps because he'll be taking full damage again and it'll be a little while until he does the next set of traps. If You, you can, if you've got high burst, burst him in the beginning, but I would recommend um, doing it that way as it makes it a little bit easier. And you're going to struggle to to get around the room for the next set of traps because he adds more and more traps each time. And we're going to kill the second boss and then just behind the, the second boss's corpse will be Leroy Jenkins. And, and this is where we need the Resurrect spell, because if you don't have one, you're not going to be able to bring him back to life. Instead, you just kind of cry on his corpse. So you will need a monk, a paladin, a priest, or whatever to resurrect him. And talk to him, resurrect him, and then he'll start a timer. And basically, once his timer is done, he's going to run through this whole dungeon, or at least most of it. Um, so that's why we're killing off every single pack, just to so that he doesn't aggro those. Because if he aggros any of them, he's going to die. So we're going to kill everything we see from here to the the kind of after the next boss. So just make sure everything is dead. Um, you've got plenty of time to do the whole run and go back to Leroy. You'll have way, way more time than you need. And uh, we're going to jump down once all of that trash up there is dead. As I said, do make sure it is all dead. And then run into this section. It's going to be kind of like a, an arena. There's going to be mobs consistently coming at you. And eventually when you're done with them all, the boss will spawn. It does take quite a bit of time, but it isn't that bad. And then eventually the boss is going to spawn, we can kill him, and then just finish off all of these kind of flying little whelps around the room. If you get any ranged spell, just kind of pick them off. I think they do eventually land, there you go. And once we've killed them all, we can move on to the next bit. 
So Leroy will run through this section as well, so once again we're going to kill off everything here, just to make sure he doesn't aggro it, and he's going to run through this room too. I activate the traps just in case, I can't remember what he actually does when he's running through here. So I activate the traps because it's like 10 seconds of my time at most, and then you need to kill the, the little core hound in the back, and then that's going to be it for the Leroy achievement, that's kind of the room that he runs to. So make sure everything is dead there, and we're going to move into the next room, which is to kill, achievement here is to kill 20 Rage Wing Whelps within 10 seconds, and um, 10 spawn at a time, so don't do any AoE damage or whatever, just DPS the, uh, the boss a little bit, and then she's eventually going to fly away, and she'll summon um, 10 Whelps, and then she'll come back, DPS her down a little bit more, and then she'll summon the next 10. So then you'll have 20 Whelps, AoE them down, and you've done the achievement. They have to die within 10 seconds, that's why we don't kill the first 10, we, we summon 10, we summon the next 10 and then kill them. And then we're going to head to the final room, which is going to be the Dragon more like uh, more like Dragon Fall achievement, which is to kill 5 Ember Scale Iron Flights before defeating the boss. So that's going to be these kind of fire breathing dragons, and um, you need to kill those. I, I forgot what my bit was for a minute, um, but eventually I realized and you've just got to kill off 5 of those. So the boss will come back down after DPSing her a little. And you're going to want to ignore her and just kill five of the, the Dragonfly guys. The breath damage doesn't really do anything. The main thing you want to be wary of is just not to get knocked off the platform. So we're going to kill off five of those. I think I end up killing a little bit more because I can't count. I was trying to find the achievement so I could see how many I actually still need. But it wasn't really working for me. So I was like, so I'm just going to kill quite a few. And then 100% no matter what, we've got the achievement. So once you feel like you've killed five, or at least five, as I said, killing a couple extra never hurts, then we can kill the boss, and we're done. That is all of those achievements. So now we're going to run all the way back to Leroy, and you're going to have to wait a good, like, depending on how fast you've done this run, you're probably going to be waiting a good five minutes, maybe. Um, so just keep that in mind. Do a double check through these rooms, make sure no mobs are still alive. As, as I said, if he does aggro any, he will get one shot by them, as he's still a, a level 60 mob, I believe. And we're just going to sit here and wait for him. So he's going to be eating his chicken. You're going to see the timer in the top of the screen. And you just need to wait here until the timer's done, basically. So it will take a bit of time. But eventually... Actually, one thing I'm not too sure is... I'm pretty sure you can get this achievement if you don't have a, a WAD garrison. But if for whatever reason you don't get it, then it could be down to not having your garrison in Wad. If for whatever reason you don't have one, then go get your garrison in Wad, come back, and try again. Um, but I'm pretty sure you don't need one, and most people should have one anyway. So the fight timer is finally about to be done. So we're just going to follow him around, and you'll see the kind of path that he takes. But he does have a bigger aggro range than like a normal player. So that's why I recommend to kill everything, just so that, you know, you're taking zero risks with the achievement. He's going to run up here, he jumps into the boss room, and he also runs up to where the, the event would start, just in case you haven't gotten that far for whatever reason. And then he's going to turn around, there you go, and he's going to run back through the other section. So, once he gets here, he's going to walk past the core hound corpse for some reason, and then he'll he'll realize that it's dead, and he'll run over to it and be like, oh, my shoulder's nice. There we go. And once he's there, you can talk to him, and we've done the, the leeway achievement. Easy as that. So, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this guide has helped you out. Look out for more videos coming soon. See ya.